Hi, when you're ready to buy your next quality cast net, make the choice of thousands of fishermen the world over. Choose a Butts Old Salt or a Super Pro. And now you can make a selection from the all-new Betts Blue Professional Series. Here are just some of the reasons I choose Betts. Double webbing at the lead line for greater abrasion resistance. Bonded twine and knots for greater strength. And your Betts cast net is guaranteed to lay 25% flatter than comparable models. These two nets are actually the same length, but unlike the bargain price net on top, they just won't spread out well because it's poorly designed and constructed. Your Betts cast net is moderately priced, but expertly designed to open wide and sink fast, just like this. and welcome to the art of cast net throwing. I'm Warren Wheeler and it's great to be with you. In this program you'll learn how to make up and throw any size or any type of cast net and then you can throw your net to catch live bait, shrimp, or even eating size fish like mullet. And with practice and effort on your part you'll throw your net just like this every time. <music> If you happen to be right-handed like I am, you're going to throw your net in a clockwise direction and the first step is to put the loop on your left wrist, snug it down like that, and then just begin to coil up the rope. Try to make the loops just medium in size, fairly even in length. This will prevent the rope from getting caught in the net when you make your throw. And uh, if you're left-handed, of course the loop goes on your right wrist and you'll throw your net in a counterclockwise fashion. The reason for this is that you can throw your net further and it's going to spread out wider when you lead the way around to the front with your strongest arm and shoulder muscles. So everything works out better when we do it this way. Finish coiling up the rope, come to the top of the net, and grab the net just below the horn in, the left, in my left hand. The horn, of course, is the round ring that the braille lines pass through. Notice now that if I extended my thumb, my thumb would point up so that this would be incorrect. Grab the net again just below the horn, everything in my left hand. Come down here and grab the net about halfway down with my right hand and pass that into my left hand. At this point, I'm left with about two to two and a half feet of net hanging down below my left hand. And this will be the same whether you're throwing a 5-foot net or a 12-foot net. So we're at this point about 24 to 30 inches hanging down and we're ready to proceed. We're at this position now with about two and a half feet or so hanging down below my left hand. And I want to come to the right side of the net to take one-third. Let's consider that the back of the net is the 6 o'clock part of the circle when the net hits the water. The front is going to be the 12 o'clock part. It's important to come to the 3 o'clock part of the circle, pull out the double lead line like that, and just quickly fan over about one-third of the net, about like that, approximately one-third. I stick my left elbow in, 
And this temporarily separates the two sections. Here's the third we split off. About halfway between my left hand and the lead line, I want to grab that third, just like that, and let the other part go. Okay, now I want to come toward my chest, around the outside of my left elbow, and toss that up onto my left shoulder. Can you see that clearly? Let's look at it again. I want to come to the right side of the net, hook my finger in the double lead line, and pull over about a, about a third. Stick my left elbow in, it separates the two sections. Halfway between here and here, grab that section and let it go off of my left arm. I'm going to come toward my chest with this section here, and the, the net does not go under my left arm. It doesn't go over my left arm. It goes around the outside of my elbow and toss it up next to the side of your neck. Very easy. Now I want to take half of what's left into my right hand. To do that, I'll simply lift up the lead line like this and fan over once, twice, about three passes, and there's half of what's left. But my hands are too far apart at this point. You want your hands close together when you throw the net because it allows you to develop more power. You can throw your net further, it opens better. And so I want to bring my right hand up close to my left, like this. Right up next to my left hand, and then I want to pinch the lead line in my right hand. Can you see this clearly? The net is laying across my three fingers, laying neatly across my three fingers, and I'm pinching the lead line, which is the rear of the circle, between my right thumb and my right index finger. And we're ready to throw. The net lays neatly across my three fingers, like this, and separately I'm pinching the lead line between the tip of my right thumb and the tip of my right index finger. To throw the net, I line up with my right shoulder pointed at the camera. Imagine you're standing here now on the front of your boat and there's a school of pogies out there. You'll be aligned correctly when your right shoulder points right in the middle of that school. Turn away. Pause, and throw. Notice now my hands are still close together, level side by side, and my balance is over my front foot, and that's all there is to it. To throw the net now, I'm gonna swing it around behind me, turning my shoulders away, keeping my hands pressed together from start to finish. I'll bring my hands around level and release the net right at the camera. Well, at this point, here's a third from the right side of the net. Pull it toward my chest. It doesn't go over my forearm. It doesn't go under my upper arm. It goes around the outside of my left elbow. Toss it up onto my shoulder like that. This was a great advantage in this technique. All of my left arm and shoulder muscles are at rest right now because the net is actually cradling, cradling my wrist. And so all the pressure is off. I'll lift up this outer lead line and fan over half of what's left. Once, twice, about three good strokes. But I only want this part here. It would be incorrect for me to start gathering more net and more lead lines and more drawstrings because that could cause the net to go out sandwiched together and the shape would be just uh, something you wouldn't be proud of. So again, all I want is this part here to lay neatly on my three fingers like that, and separately I'm pinching the rear lead line in my right hand between my right thumb and my right index finger. Turn away, swing the net away, keeping my shoulders level and my hands together, and I'll bring the net all the way around to the target and release it. You can see here my hands are still close together, and that's all there is to it. This is a 12-foot mullet net, and the only difference in throwing a larger net and a smaller net is that you have to fold it twice. Everything else is the same. So I'll fold it once, come down here, and grab the net so that about two to two and a half feet is hanging down below my left hand. 
come to the right side and just fan over about a third which is about like that stick my left elbow in isolates the two sections grab that one third right here come toward me around my elbow and toss it up there now all these muscles are at rest I want to fan over half of what's left so I lift up the outer lead line fan it over once twice th three about four times make your make long smooth sweeps and get this step over with in a hurry but now my hands are too far apart and I don't want to capture any of these lead uh, braille lines or this lead line out here this is the only part I want right here the net's laying neatly on my three fingers I'm pinching the rear lead line to throw it we'll do exactly the same thing turn away keeping both hands together from start to finish bring the net around level and throw it hard straight out in front of me let's look at how it works point my right shoulder at an imaginary school of bait fish swing the net away You've seen the makeup procedure in detail. Now let's look at some other tips and techniques that will really help you be on your way to throwing your net successfully every time. First thing we want to talk about is alignment. You're standing on the front of the boat searching for bait. Try to align your right shoulder at that school of bait fish that might be 10 or 15 feet in diameter. Of course you can be off a little bit. Uh, the boat's turning and moving with the wind and current and so forth. But the point is, if your target is over here at 10 or 11 o'clock, then try to line up that way. And by the same token, if it's over here at 1 or 2 o'clock, try to set up in that direction. So you'll set up with your right shoulder facing your target as a right-handed net thrower. The hands should stay close together from side by, uh, side by side from start to finish because it helps you generate more power, more distance. Everything works out better when we do it this way. I want to swing the net around behind me and pause to allow all the leads to collect around behind me for about a second or so. My right shoulder is turned away. My weight goes to my rear foot. To throw the net, I step onto my front foot and pull smoothly and come around level with both hands. Come around level hard to all the way to the target. I don't want to release the net over here to the left. Don't want to hang on to it till it goes till it passes over here to the uh, right side of the target pause pull real hard and stop and hold your position remember you have to hold your right hand especially in position for a second or two to allow the lead line to come out from between your thumb and forefinger if I turn to the front and drop that hand then those leads go straight down to the ground putting stress on the rest of the net and you're not going to get a good spread Turn away, pull, come around level. Many fishermen will turn and sweep the net up in the air like this, with a motion like this. This is fine, but it allows the net to go out in a lopsided fashion. And the low side's gonna hit the water first and it's gonna collapse, and you're not gonna be happy with what you see. It's just as easy to come around level. Come around level and the net can go out in a more balanced and even fashion. I have a ballpoint pen here I want to use to illustrate as the lead line that I'm pinching between the tip of my thumb and forefinger. I turn around, pull real hard and stop and release everything. Let the fingers of both hands go straight. However, still pinching that lightly and the forward energy of the uh, net coming out of my hands will pull that out at just the right time. We don't want to restrict the net from going out at the back. We just want it to go last. And this is how you do it. Keep these things in mind and you'll be well on your way to success in cast net throwing.
like you to meet my daughter Kathy and my grandson Daniel. He's 10 years old and they like to fish for speckled trout with live bait and they both prefer the quick load technique to throw their nets. Keep in mind that you can have better power when you keep your hands close together and you can throw your net farther with your hands close together from start to finish, okay? And lowering your trajectory. Don't throw it any higher than you need to, especially in times when the water is clear. The bait fish are more likely to see the net coming if you throw it up in the air. They're less likely to see it coming when you throw it straight out over the water and they won't be able to react in time. Turn away, pause with my shoulders turned away, pull them around hard and stop, hold my position. I don't need to release this. The forward energy of the net leaving my hands and going out in front of me will pull it out at just the right time. The idea is to come around level, hands together, trying not to let one hand cross over the other, trying not to let one hand fall down to my side. Of course, you don't want the hands to spread apart. If I turn and do this suddenly, the energy is gone and I'll probably get an oval shape from left to right and not much distance at all. Just keep your hands together. That's it. We're at this position now with about uh, two and a half to three feet of net hanging down below my hand. I reach down and pick up the double lead line like this. Bring my forearm over my head and drop it up on my left shoulder. Okay, want to keep the lead lines together. Let's look at that again. Pick up the double lead line and just kind of drop it back over my shoulder, maybe a foot and a half of net up there. And we want to keep the net up close to the side of my neck so it can come off smoothly when we're ready to throw. And now we're going to split the net. I'm going to take half of the net into my right hand. I reach down and take this outer lead line and then just fan it over make long smooth passes and we'll get this step over with in a hurry. We'll go once, twice, uh, about three times did the job. Usually three or four passes will split any net regardless of the size. But now my hands are too far apart. We always want the hands close together when we begin our throw. So I'll slide my right hand up close to my left hand and let the net lay neatly on my three fingers. Can you see this clearly? The net's laying in a neat row across my three fingers so it can go out smoothly. And it's also necessary for me to pinch the lead line at the back. Not to restrict it from going out, but just to make sure it goes last. To throw the net now, I'll swing the net around behind me, allow my shoulders to turn away, pause, Bring both hands around toward the camera. It'll be very helpful to you to make some practice throws in your backyard or maybe out here on the beach like this. Try to concentrate on the form rather than worrying about what the net's going to do. Let's let the leads do all the work. Remember your hands are close together, your right shoulder faces the target, you swing away and pause to allow all the leads to collect around to the rear, and then you pull both hands around level and stop when they point right at your target spot. And let me suggest that you make five practice throws in a series and grade yourself on a scale of one to ten on each throw. Remember, turn away, turn to the front and stop and release the net cleanly. If you're having problems at this point, remember the shape of the net lying on the ground can actually tell you what went wrong and then you'll know how to correct it. Let's look at some examples. It would be incorrect for me to hold the net in my right hand with my fingers curled in like this, especially at the time of release. If I do that, there's a good chance that the front of the net and the back of the net could go out sandwiched together like we have here, or maybe even the both sides of the net could go out uh, clinging together. 
in any case, you have a total disaster on your hands. And the solution for this type of shape, or any other shape where you don't get a good spread, is to release the net cleanly out of your three fingers when you turn to the front. You let your fingers go completely straight in both hands, and the front of the net will go out, and both sides will go out freely, unrestricted, and of course the back of the net goes last. And that's the solution for a shape like this. Here we have the much dreaded and often seen crescent moon shape. And I'll bet you already understand what caused this. In this throw, the front went out just fine and both sides went out okay too. But I must have thrown the back out with the front. Remember, we talked about pinching the lead line between your thumb and forefinger just enough to make sure that it goes last. So the solution to this is to turn to the front release the net cleanly, maintain just light pressure, and the back of the net will go out, and then this row would have looked a little bit more like this. That's all there is to it. I'm looking at a shape here where the one to two o'clock section of the net is dished in. As a right-handed net thrower, it's the front right corner. And remember, when we turn away, it's important to pull the net all the way around to the spot your, your shoulder is lined up on. If I turn away and pull it around and release it here at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, the front right corner may not have quite enough force on it to develop out into a nice curve. So the solution for this problem is to turn away, pause, come around, and you can throw the net hard toward the target, but bring your hands all the way to the spot that you're lined up on and you won't have to experience this problem. This shape could be described as a crescent moon on the left side of the circle. So I, as a right-handed net thrower, I'm throwing the net clockwise. It's important for me to keep my hands side by side, close together, pause, come turn around, and release the net right at the target. If I allow my hands to spread and allow my left hand to cross over my right with an extra flick of the wrist or something like that, that can cause the left side of the net to actually move over to the right. So the solution for this problem is to simply keep your hands side by side, come around and release the net right at the target. This is a five foot bait net, 10 foot diameter, and you'll be amazed at how much bait you can actually catch with a smaller net like this. Let's look at a slightly modified version of the easy split technique to throw smaller nets. We'll start from this position to save time. It's important to keep the net shortened to about two and a half feet for maximum centrifugal force when you throw the net. I'll lift up the double lead line, lay it up on my left shoulder, Putting enough up there so it'll stay there till we finish making up the net. Fan over half of what's left real quickly. Bring my hands in close together. Pinch the lead line between my thumb and forefinger. Now here's where the difference lies. I'm going to put my knuckles together and press my hands against my left side. And from this point we're ready to throw. And instead of coming around from the side like we did before, I'm going to turn and push straight out with both hands. Let's look at how that works. Now let's look at exactly what your hands and arms do when you throw the net this way. You have the, head, the net divided in your two hands, your hands are against your left side, you're standing on the front of your boat, and as that school of bait comes within range, you pull, it, pull the net away from your side and turn and push. That's all there is to it. Pull away, turn, and push firmly with both hands. Equal force, 
and the turning of your shoulders first away and then to the front creates all the centrifugal force you need so you don't need to try to spin the net into a circle this is all it takes turn away pull and push give it a try Let's just quickly review some of the things we've talked about so far. When you throw the net, you'll have your right shoulder pointed at that school of bait fish. Your hands are close together. Raise your elbows to get more strength, more power, more centrifugal force. Turn away, pause, come around and bring your hands around from the side to generate centrifugal force. Holding your elbow up and waiting until you start to the front will prevent the net from slipping off your left shoulder too soon. If that happens, the left side of the net can be flat like this. If you notice that the left side of your net is flat when it hits the water, it's a common problem that's easily solved. Just wait until you turn to the front and then push a little harder with your left arm. Ultimately, you should use equal pressure with both arms. So to prevent that, simply lift your elbows, Turn away and wait until you start to the front. Pull it around and throw it hard with both hands straight at the target as you turn to the front. That generates plenty of centrifugal force to throw the smallest net up to the largest ones. It would be incorrect for me to hold my right hand like this when I go to release the net. If I do this, then the net and the drawstrings could actually tangle on my fingers as it went out. It'll work much better to release the net cleanly off my three fingers, like this. Turn and release the whole thing all at once. However, remember, I picked up a small stick here to illustrate the lead line I'm holding between my right thumb and forefinger. I've got my fingers curled around the right side of the net. Turn away, pause, turn, and throw it hard and release everything all at once. However, I still have light pressure on this uh, rear lead line, the six o'clock part of the circle, and it goes last. Remember this, and you'll be well on your way to success in cast net throwing.
When you're ready to buy a cast net, remember you'll catch more bait a lot faster with a net that'll spread out to a nice wide circle like this one. A net like this is easy to handle and fun to throw. Why waste your valuable fishing time or your money trying to catch bait with a poorly designed bargain price net like this? Either the lead line is too short or the material is too stiff, so this net just won't spread out like it should. Just look at the difference in coverage even though both nets are the same size. At Wheeler Enterprises you'll only pay a few dollars more for a top quality net that will last you for years. Call today. Accuracy is important. The distance between these two posts is just a little bit wider than the diameter of my net. So I'll take my time to line up correctly and stop my hands at the halfway point between the two posts. How many times have you planned a day of fishing, you go to the marina, you launch your boat, only to find out that they don't have any live bait? Well in this segment you'll see just how easy it is to catch your own live bait. And this is actually better than what you can buy anyway. Today I'm using an 8 foot pilchard net with a 1 quarter inch square mesh. And you really need a net like this in your boat. Here we got a bunch of uh, finger mullet and a few shrimp as you can see here nice size shrimp there for eating actually and we probably have 75 finger mullet in here this would be a superb bait for uh, flounder and uh, redfish or trout and actually any predatory good eating fish will certainly attack a finger mullet I'm gonna let these go because we're not actually we're not actually fishing today we're just going to show you that you have a wide variety of live bait available to you. Again, absolutely free. Shrimp like this uh, on a popping cork is an excellent bait for speckled trout. And again, anything that actually swims will attack a shrimp. We'll let all these go and then go see what other types of bait fish we can come up with. And let's see what we came up with this time. Finger mullet for sure, which again are an, an excellent type of live bait. And uh, a couple of shrimp here even a small blue fish. Well, we're not fishing today, so we're going to release these. Well, let's see what we have here this time. More finger mullet, a large, uh, a large menhaden, or pogey as they're referred to. We 
picked up some nice menhaden here for offshore slow trolling or even uh, bottom fishing live or even frozen. They make excellent dead bait for uh, big hungry redfish. Now these menhaden are about five inches long so we could have used a little bit larger net. But as you see we got an assortment here of a uh, small finger mullet. Uh, we even got a, a little bit larger mullet here. This, this type of bait would also uh, be excellent for slow trolling. And we probably got uh, a couple dozen men hating in that one throw. Some of them are still in the net. Let me get these overboard and then we'll go see what else we can find. Well, a mixture now of menhaden, uh, finger mullet, and some mullet that are about uh, six or seven inches long. Remember, all of this is available to you absolutely free. And by seeing just how easy it is to, to do this, you'll have the confidence <laughs> to go out and do it for yourself. And, uh, another mixture of fish and we got one pogey four and a half to five inches long Again, quite a few finger mullet and some a little bit larger. Excellent bait, alive or frozen. We're in Charlotte Harbor in southwest Florida now. The month is June and from May to November it seems like there's bait everywhere out on the flats. Most of what you see out here are greenback sardines known as greenies, pilchards known as white bait. Today I'm using a five foot net with a one quarter inch mesh, just like the one you saw in the instruction out on the beach. And you'll see just how much bait you can catch with a smaller net. Mm -hmm. 